Congratulations on your new corals. The hardest part picking them out is over. Now you just have to think about where you want to place the corals in your tank for their overall growth and their long-term health. Now, while you might be thinking that that's a bit of a daunting task, don't worry, I've got you covered. This video, I'm gonna talk about the things that you should be considering when it comes to placing corals inside your tank. So stay tuned, we're gonna get started in just a second. Hi there, I'm Hillary for Waterlogged on behalf of saltwateraquarium.com. Like I promised, this video I'm going to go over some of the things that you need to be keeping in mind when it comes to placing your corals. Now, when you are thinking about placing corals, there's going to be three main things that you need to be considering. But before I tell you those, I want you to do a little exercise with me. If you've seen any of my previous videos, you know I'm always talking about how important it is to do your research. And the same can be applied for corals. So real quickly, I want you to go ahead and get a pen and paper and think about all of the corals that you've purchased. Go ahead and write down the names of the corals that you've purchased on that sheet of paper. And then next to each coral, I want you to write down three things. Next to them, you're gonna write down the lighting that they are requiring. You're gonna write down the flow that they need and you're going to write down their level of aggression. So keep this card handy and go ahead and do that for each of the different corals that you've purchased. Once you have all of this information written down, you're gonna be steps ahead to knowing where to place your corals. So you can probably already guess the three main areas that I'm gonna talk about are the lighting, the flow, and the aggression of each of the corals. So let's go ahead and start with light. Now, if you think of your tank as a big box, you can break it down into three different areas. So you have the bottom, which is going to be further away from the light, and as a result, it's not going to get as strong or as intense lighting. Other areas could be underneath the underside of rocks. Those are also going to get less light, even if they're higher up in the tank. And then you have the middle section of the tank. It's not gonna be as intense, but it's still gonna get more light than the bottom. Now, on the top is where you are going to have the highest and the most light that's coming off of those lights. And as a result, the top of the tank is where you're gonna think about placing those corals that prefer higher light. So when you think of corals that like lots of light, think things like your SPS. A lot of those Acroporas really enjoy being up at the top of the tank. When it comes to placing corals towards the middle of the tank, you might see things like your Ganyaporas. They like a good bit of light, but they don't need it so high as some of the other corals. Now think about the bottom of the tank. If you've ever spent time looking at other hobbyist tanks, you might have noticed a handful of corals that typically are always found towards the bottom or in the darker areas. So the first thing that comes to mind, a coral that doesn't care for a lot of light are sun corals. They don't really like lots of light. You'll see those underneath on overhangs. Another type of coral you might find towards the bottom of the tank are plate corals. Those are great ones to put on your substrate. A lot of times you'll see a lot of acans or micromusas hanging out towards the bottom on the rock work or even in the sand. So that kind of gives you an idea of placing corals. Now, when you're doing your research and you're looking at lighting requirements, you might see it referred to in a couple of different ways. So you could see it referred to as PAR. PAR is a reading. You're gonna take a measurement with this. This is a PAR meter, and it's gonna tell you the level of PAR. Now, I'm mentioning PAR to you because you will see some of the different coral vendors refer to the lighting requirements in PAR, but it varies a little bit from vendor to vendor what is considered low, medium, and high. So for the sake of this conversation, we're just gonna talk about like corals that need low light, medium light, and high light. Now the second thing to take in mind when it comes to placing your corals is flow. This is another thing that's going to vary from tank to tank, depending on how you have your return set up or how you have your power heads and wave makers positioned within your tank. Each tank is gonna get different flow than the other. But I'd be willing to bet if you've ever done a broadcast feed, you have a pretty good idea of how the water flows and moves around in your tank, and you probably know where areas of high flow and low flow are. So 
keep that in mind when it comes to placing your corals. Now flow is important because it's not only going to bring nutrients to the coral, say if you are broadcast feeding, but it's also going to help remove waste from and keep it from being stuck inside um, that coral skeletal structure. You don't want any detritus or any waste to be built up and having flow that is adequate for your corals is going to keep that from happening. Another thing that flow is important is because it affects the growth pattern of some of the corals in the tank. Now I'm not going to get into that, but just something that you should know and be aware of when it comes to placing your corals. All right, the third thing that I'm letting you know to keep in mind when it comes to placing corals is the level of their aggression. Now I've done a full video on aggression in aquariums, but two things to keep in mind when it comes to corals. Corals can be aggressive in the way that they grow. So think um, like a plating monopora, they tend to grow fairly fast, just like green star polyps and xenia once it gets established. So that growth is going to be a form of aggression. And as it grows, it takes over space and it can change the light and the flow pattern for the other corals around it, which is why I'm telling you to be mindful. The other fairly obvious reason that you should be thinking of aggression is because some corals actually have sweeper tentacles that can reach out and sting nearby neighbors. So if you know that a certain species of coral you're placing in your tank is more aggressive than others, you want to give it a little bit more room than you normally would with some of those peaceful, friendly corals that you know are going to get along well together. Okay, now that I've gone over the three things you should be considering when placing corals, I'm gonna run you through what it looks like when I add new corals to my tank and how that process goes. So let's say I have a new batch of corals. I've got them home, I've already taken them through a coral dip, they're ready to be placed in my tank. I have my handy little note card and I know what those corals preferences and requirements are with respect to lighting flow and how aggressive they are. And I have a good idea of where I want to place them in the tank. Now at this point, I'm not hard placing them. I don't have any glue or anything like that. So I'm going to go ahead and put the corals in the tank about where I think that they would do best at. Now it might not always be possible for me to put them in the exact spot, say on a slanted piece of rock, but I can get them as close to that place as possible. Then I'm just going to watch and wait. For about a week, I will watch and observe those corals and see how they react. Now, the reason for this is because I want to make sure that they're opening up, which they might not do right away. Think about um, the stress of transport and then being placed into a new environment and even going through a coral dip. All of those factors are stressful for corals and they might not open up right away. So I want to give them time to make sure that they are happy where they are situated in their new environment. And that might take a few days, but that's fine. I'm going to be patient and let that process take place. Now, after a period of time, I can see if they're happy and healthy, if the tissue has expanded, if those polyps are out, I know that the coral is happy, then I can go ahead and cut off that frag plug and glue those corals into that place. But if for some reason they're not happy, this gives me the opportunity to move the coral around the tank and try and find the best possible spot for me to place it without causing any extra added stress of gluing it down and then taking it off and trying to get things just right. So a little patience goes a long way. Now that you've heard how I like to place corals in my tank and we've talked a little bit about the things you should be considering when it comes to placing your corals, I hope that you have the confidence to go ahead and place your newest batch of corals inside your tank. Make sure to tag us in your photos. We would love to see how your new corals are growing and how your tank is coming along. All right, that's going to conclude this video. This has been Hillary for Waterlogged on behalf of saltwateraquarium.com. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.